In this video, we're going to solve rather complicated trigonometric equations because, as you can see, some of the terms contain uh, a number that is not 1, right? This one is a 2. In this example, there's a 3 for the, for the angle here as the coefficient of x. So, as you can see, this will uh, require you to use double angle or sum to product formula. So, in this example, we're definitely going to use the double angle formula. As you can see, the sine of 2 theta is equal to 2 sine theta cosine theta, right? So we're going to just uh, substitute with that. 2 sine theta cosine theta minus sine theta is equal to 0. So that means we can actually take out the sine theta, factor it out, and we're going to have 2 cosine theta minus 1 is equal to 0. So that means sine theta is equal to 0 or 2 cosine theta minus 1 is equal to 0. If you add 1 on both sides, you will get 2 cosine of theta is equal to 1. Dividing both sides by 2 solves for cosine of theta. So that's equal to 1 half. So when sine of theta is equal to 0, we know that the theta can be 0 or it can be a pi. Right? We can't write 2 pi anymore because 2 pi is not part of the interval uh, simply because 2 pi and 0 have the same position. Right? So sine of, sine of 2 pi is the same essentially as sine of 0. So we're not interested in 2 pi anymore. So 0 and pi are the two solutions in this case. In the case of cosine theta being equal to 1 half, we know that the theta can be pi over 3 Right? because the cosine in the first quadrant where the pi over 3 angle lies in radians is positive, right? It's 1 half. Also, we know in quadrant 4, the cosine is also positive. Namely, 5 pi over 3 is another angle at which the cosine is 1 half. Okay, and that's going to be it, right? So the solutions to this problem are going to be starting from 0. The next one is pi over 3. I'm just going in order from the smallest to greatest. And then there's going to be a pi, and then there is a 5 pi over 3. So these are the respective solutions for the first example. Now, in the second example, what we're going to be using is going to be the sum to product formula. As you can see, uh, what you have on the left side matches what of what you have on the uh, left side of the uh, formula here, sum to product formula, as you can see, you can match the a with the x, and then you can match b with the 3x, with this entire angle product 3x. And you know you can use this formula on the right side, so we're going to transform the left side of this equation into the right side of the sum to product formula. So we're going to have essentially 2 cosine of a plus b over 2. a is going to be x b is going to be 3x, and we're going to divide this by 2, and then keep multiplying because we're transforming the sum to product, as uh, is described in this formula. So cosine of uh, x minus 3x this time divided by 2, and that is set equal to the right side cosine of 2x. Okay. So now, as you can see, this becomes clearer. Now we can actually <laughs> make it easier, right? So it's going to be 2 cosine of 4x over 2 times cosine of negative 2x over 2. And that's equal to cosine of 2x. So this transforms to 2 cosine of 2x times cosine of... Uh, negative x. Now, since cosine is an even function, cosine of negative x is equal to cosine of x. That's the same thing. So that's set to cosine of 2x. Now, subtracting cosine 2x on both sides will help us solve this equation. Okay, so what we're going to get is 2 cosine of 2x cosine of x minus cosine of 2x is equal to 0. So we can factor out now uh, the cosine of 2x. So in inside we're going to have what? We're going to have 
cosine of x minus 1, uh, there should be a 2 there, 2 cosine of x minus 1 is equal to 0. So we're going to have two choices here. So the first one is cosine of 2x is equal to 0, and 2 cosine of x minus 1 is equal to 0. The right side is easy to solve because that is the same thing as we had here. Right? The theta and x mean the same thing. They mean the angle. Right? So essentially the x is going to be just copied over. So pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3 right, will be the solutions for this equation. Now for this equation, we know that uh, cosine of uh, pi over 2 or 3 pi over 2 will be equal to 0. Right? So we're going to set 2x being equal to pi over 2. 3 pi over 2, but that's not going to be enough. You might say like, but if it's going to be, if it's going to be 5 pi over 2, it's going to be greater than pi, uh, 2 pi, right? And we're not allowed to be greater. But keep in mind that you still need to divide by 2. So if you fail to list more uh, values here, you will, you will have undercounted the number of solutions that you can have because you still have to divide by 2. If you divide for example, 5 pi over 2, another type of solution. If you fail to divide it by 2, you're not going to get 5 pi over 4, right? So 5 pi over 4 is definitely less than 2 pi, right? And there's actually one more that you may accidentally avoid and undercount your number of solutions. There's also 7 pi over 2 that's possible, right? Because if you divide this by 2, you will have 7 pi over 4. And 7 pi over 4 is still within the constraint of the solutions that you can have in the interval from 0 to 2 pi, right? So you have four possibilities and not just the first two. Be sure you understand that. You will still have to be dividing by 2 to get you pi over 4, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, and 7 pi over 4. If you fail to divide by 2, you might stop at these two values thinking that you can't go over 2 pi, but be sure you understand. x with a coefficient of 1 will give you the final solutions. And then you can easily see, since you divided by 2, that you're not go going over the 2 pi constraint even by having four of these values listed. Okay, so now the solutions as a result from the smallest to the greatest are going to be pi over 4, pi over 3, 3 pi over 4, 5 pi over 4, 5 pi over 3, because that's greater, right? And then finally, the last one, which is 7 pi over 4. Okay, so I hope this was useful. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.